Thank you for browsing page 121. Today we're going to take a look at a Dragon magazine that was on the shelves 40 years ago. That's Dragon number 83 from March of 1984. There we have one of the excellent chess covers that uh, graced the covers of Dragon during this time. There were four or five of them, I think. And we're promised for th our $3 high-level AD&D module, all about gemstones and unarmed combat simplified. So let's dive in. I love this cover. This is one of my favorite covers they ever did. We open it up, and inside, right away, a couple of ads. Net weight, three tons. Net effect, terror. I remember this guy, the Atlantean War Mastodon. It was about $15, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if I can find it on here. Uh, it was expensive. I remember that. I wanted it. Yep, Atlantean War, War Mastodon, $15. $15 is a lot more than I had in 1983. I always liked that, uh, that sculpt, though. I thought that was pretty cool. And ICE announces the dawning of a new world, the Lore Master series. This is ICE, Iron Crown Enterprises. They were uh, kind of chart master is what their nickname was. There were a lot of rules and charts. But a lot of people love that system. March 1984, special attractions, the Dancing Hut. A no-holds challenge for high-level AD&D characters. Well, I remember that, that particular module. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Then we got the letters or the uh, editorial uh, by Kim Mon. Out on a limb, letters to the editor. And then we continue on with the forum, opinions and observations. We get an ad for Diamond Dice, Master Dice Sets, out of Park Ridge, Illinois. Not terribly far from me. Cast your own fantasy figures. Uh, the Duncan Company, Calvert, Texas. I wonder if either of these are still around. <laughs> In the Victory Games world of James Bond 007, play role-playing play, role in Her Majesty's Secret Service. The excitement is just beginning. Oh, we get Live and Love, Die, and You Only Live Twice. <laughs> That's coming from the summer of 83. Summer of 83 was famously the summer of the two Bonds. We got Octopussy starring Roger Moore. And, uh, oh my, Never Say Never Again with Roger Moore, the unofficial Bond. There was some question as to the ownership of the copyright, so... Two conflicting uh, bonds came out that summer. And now uh, we get finishing up the forum. We get an ad for role playing, role play campaign, and adventure game aids from the companions in Bath, Maine. Thieves Guild special offer from Game Lords. Thieves Guild basic rules available mail order from now until June 31st, 1984, for the low price of $10 out of Gathersburg, Maryland. And you are the hero in Endless Quest books. Endless Quest books were really hot in the early 80s. TSR jumped on the bandwagon, had a bunch of them. I had one or two over the years. I don't think I have any of them anymore. We're going to add for Cities, Cities of Harn from Columbia Games out of Blaine, Washington. Harn was an interesting set of rules. I had a couple of the supplements for it. I don't think I ever had the core rules. I never played it. If you played it, let me know what you thought. I like the supplements that I have. I have no idea what became of them. I probably loaned them to somebody and lost them. The role-playing... Game Association, the RPGA Network. This was big back then. I never joined then. I joined in 2000 as D&D 3rd was coming out because they were doing a whole Greyhawk thing with it. I was in it for a couple of years. But the RPGA, that was a big, big deal. Polyhedron Magazine came out of that. Be all that you can dream with Heroes, Avalon Hill's role-playing magazine. Avalon Hill, the creator of epic historical board war games and things like that. Jumping in with the role-playing magazine. And they're featuring such things as James Bond 007, Powers and Perils, RuneQuest, and Lords of Creation. Coming this spring. The Many Facets of Gems, Stories Behind the Stones listed in the DMG. This was a pretty neat article. I don't didn't know anything about gems, and I know very little now about them. I do know that when I go to the museum of or the Field Museum downtown. One of the rooms I'm definitely going to be spending some time in is going to be the gem room, because my wife loves it. And we go in there, and you see all the various precious stones and the, such that they have in there, and it's pretty neat. This gives us what the gems are all about, a good idea of what they look like, and some of their, quote, magic, unquote, attributes. So that was a pretty neat article. I do remember using that quite a bit in my game. Uh, the Complete Strategist, your newest adventure lies on the horizon. Nine Complete Strategist locations. I'm given to understand that Complete Strategist is still around. Uh, one of my viewers had left a comment a month or two ago that they are still around. That's pretty cool. Continuing our gem article, we end up with 
You'll need skills of poker, diplomacy, and chess to win at Pentant Star. That's hard to say. It's a fantasy board game of magic and strategy from Adventure Games in Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. Be ye witch or be ye magistrate. It makes no difference. All are suspect. Witch Hunt. Role playing 1692, Salem. Hmm. Bayonne, New Jersey. That's interesting. Some more on the gems. DMs, are you lo players losing interest? Mine don't. For DMs only. DM monster statistics records, party stat records, spell stats, time record from Dragonlight Enterprises out of Plattsburgh, New York. Continuing on, a very long uh, article on the gems. We get to the end here. We have an ad for the Egyptian trilogy, Man, Myth, and Magic. A role-playing game of man's greatest adventure. These guys were out of Dallas, Texas. Label your letter. You want to know who wrote it. If you're going to get printed in Dragon, you want your name on it. Denizen, 25mm fantasy figures from Prestige Hobby Products. Out of Brighton, Sussex, Great Britain. Pretty neat. The Ecology of the Sturge. I love the Sturge. I took a look at the Sturge uh, a few weeks ago on my channel. They're a great low to medium level encounter. Uh, they can really vex even higher level characters. I think it's pretty good. Ed Greenwood always wrote a really good ecology article. We get guidelines if you want to contribute to Dragon Magazine. Adventure Under Other Suns from Fantasy Games Unlimited. These guys were out of Roslyn, New York. I never played Other Suns. I played a couple of Fantasy Games Unlimited. Continuing on the Sturge article, Experience the Realm of Complete Fantasy by Bard Games. At Finer Hobby Stores, they're out of Greenwich, Greenwich Connecticut. Feudal Lords, the complete, the original role-playing play-by-mail. Play-by-mails were kind of fading a little bit by this time. They were still around. They were around all the way into the early 90s, but they weren't nearly the draw that they were in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. These guys were out of St. Clair Shores, Michigan. And then we get the Arms of Nargish Tor, the Palladium role-playing game. Palladium had a lot of stuff out of Detroit, Michigan. The Armory. This is when dragons started getting more and more ads, I noticed. Uh, I remember at the time getting a little unhappy because more and more pages seemed to be devoted to ads. I realize the ads keep the magazine going and keep the price where it is, but the part of me that was the consumer, as always, when you grumble about commercials, grumbled about the ads. But now I kind of like going through the ads because they're a lot of nostalgia. We have the Armory out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Armory dice were the top flight dice in the day. I remember some people coming back from Gen Con with Armory Dice and very excited about what they'd spent on for them. And there we have the Armory Dice and free pouches available from following fine hobby and game stores. As I always do, I take a look for Illinois on here. We have Games Plus and Mount Prospect. They're still there. Pegasus Hobbies and Waukegan. I was never up there. I don't know if they're still around. If anybody knows, please let me know. And that's it. The Test of the Twins. Fiction by Margaret Weiss. This was the early days of Dragonlance. I loved uh, Raceland and Caramon from Dragonlance. This was my first exposure to Dragonlance. I remember reading this article and being kind of confused, or this, this short story and being kind of confused. I got into Dragonlance in a big way in the mid-80s. Um, I eventually, my interest faded a little bit. I ran one or two adventures set in Kryn, and... Uh, Dragonlance had a lot of stuff to represent it. The best thing it did is it started all the fiction for TSR and was pretty darn successful for that. And Dragonlance here, a little sidebar for us. Preview for a Dragonlance story. Dragon Magazine will introduce some of the heroes of the lance in a series of, sto series of short stories. The story about twins Raceland and Caramon is the first of those. This is the first time I ever met these guys, and I actually like this story. The story continues on, and we have great moments in American history. Games Workshop, U.S., Gathersburg, Maryland. General Washington and his crew from the Citadel crossed the Delaware to capture the revolutionary new games from Britain. There you go. And then continuing on the short story uh, from Dragonlance, we get it right on. Got a subject question about an article, something you want us to cover, go ahead and drop us a line to out on a limb. The Dancing Hut, an ADD game adventure for high-level heroes, designed by Roger Moore. I have run this a number of times. I really enjoy Baba Yaga's Dancing Hut. I actually have a figure that my, one of my sons bought me off uh, online. 
uh, a few years ago. It's all nicely painted up. Uh, I love Bob Yaga's Dancing Hut. I ran this adventure, and then the printed adventure, uh, which came out a few years later. And then the Dancing Hut for DM's eyes only. I'm not going to look at this too much now. I may do a, a video just looking at the hut itself down the line. Fantasy Lords by Grenadier. Real treasure for your next adventure. Grenadier had some beautiful stuff. The Fantasy Lords line was outstanding. Out of Springfield, Pennsylvania. Continuing on the Dancing Hut, we get the best of Raul Partha. Raul Partha had some great stuff. I have that set. I'm not sure if I have the others. I definitely have that one. And these guys, Raul Partha, was Raffam in Canada. Otherwise, they came out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Continuing on, Bobby Agus Dancing Hut. This is a very long article. I always enjoyed this immensely. This is just so much fun. If you're looking for a good multi-night game, go ahead and do Bobby Agus Dancing Hut. I didn't even have them meet Bobby Aga until the very last, um, last part of the adventure. I had that Bobby Aga wasn't there, and they were going exploring through all these places. And the, the hut itself is an extra-dimensional space that has all these different rooms and corridors in it. Anything you want to put in there can be in there. Very long module written by Roger Moore, who always writes a great module. Just a really good adventure. And there's the, the lady herself, Baba Yaga. You see negative 4, 135 hit points, 3 attacks per round, assassination, crushing horror, crushing horror, magic spells, special defenses. She's got a lot of spell immunities. She casts as a 14th level druid. 16 plus hit dice monsters of fighter, 25th level MU, 15th level illusionist. So pretty darn strong. I, I really liked Bobby Yaga. You got to be careful though. It's got to be a high level party. But by the time you're in there for a bit, your party's definitely going to go up a few levels. We have Hoof It, Ralph Partha Imports. I jumped on these as much as I could. I bought a bunch of these. I really wanted mounted figures. And I tried my hand at painting a few back in the day. And they looked gar like garbage. And then my friend... Mike took over painting, and now they look gorgeous. I'll put them on a, on a video sometime and show the various mounted uh, figures I have. But I love this series. And this is from Ralph Parth in Cincinnati, Ohio. And we're still continuing on the rest of Baba Yaga with the acknowledgments at the end. And we have an ad for Mercenaries, Spies, and Private Eyes. These are miniatures, official miniatures for the role-playing game. Uh, from Castle Creations out of Columbus, Ohio. That's pretty cool. History of the Second World War. Now a major game series from Task Force Games. Wow. I started before I ever played D&D. We played some of the Avalon Hill. And I'm sure GDW uh, historical board war games. A buddy of mine and I were into them in high school. And uh, I, I remember the Six Day War and a couple others. I don't remember off the top of my head. But they were they were fun. So, finishing up uh, the rest of Bob Yaga, and we have Game Grid Sheets, the original and the largest, from Broadway, Oakland, California. If you're moving, be sure to let them know if you're subscribing and you're moving. We've taken the dice out of fighting. Nova Game Design out of Manchester, Connecticut. Never played Nova. I saw them on the shelf, but I didn't buy them. How to Finish Fights Faster. A suggested simpler system for unarmed combat by Roger Moore. Roger Moore got most of this issue. I never liked D&D's unarmed combat for the grappling and, and such. We've always just kind of done it as the regular combat. But the damage, I think the DMG has the damage being 25% actual. And the rest 75% that heals very quickly. Just representing bruises and contusions, things like that. Um, I've always found that that works pretty well. I'm a big fan of bar fights. Uh, here's got a nice depiction of one. Uh, we've got a fine ad for cunning strategy, diplomacy, deceit. These are the challenges of Earthwoods, Earthwood. Uh, kings and superheroes in a world of conquest and sorcery. Uh, looks like, is this a play-by-mail? Yep, two-week turnaround. It's play-by-mail out of Miami, Florida. Continuing on with the grappling article. I remember reading this article. I really didn't use much out of it. As I said, we just kind of modified the regular combat rules. Games Plus, your SPI specialists out of Mount Prospect, Illinois. These guys are still around. Special computer game back way in the in 84. Game Master Hobby Incorporated, adventure gaming specialists out of San Francisco, California. And Raffam Company 
out of Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. These guys had some nice looking figures. I know I've got a bunch of these scattered in my collection. A look at AOK's Old and New. Another preview for the Top Secret Companion. Top Secret was, we were still, we'd play it once in a while with my group, but it had chilled a little bit. We played it earlier in the 80s, uh, but we were playing a lot more Champions and Gamma World and Traveler as our off games, our off D&D games. So uh, Top Secret would get played once in a while, but we pushed a little bit to the background by this point. And then we have Open Your Own Magic Shop for only $15, Dragon Tooth out of New York, New York. I have this guy. I bought this at Gen Con. I think I bought it my first Gen Con in 84. These are really nice sets, especially if they're painted by somebody who knows what they're doing. Again, my player Mike painted it. And then we're continuing on the Top Secret article. And then we've put yourself in the story with Traveler, science fiction adventure in the far future from Game Designers Workshop in Bloomington, Illinois. Yes, Traveler. I don't know if you guys know, but I love Traveler. <laughs> it's the other half of my channel, practically. Uh, Traveler is a really good game. They're coming into an exciting time now, too. Really good jumping on point if anybody's been kind of on the fence. They're coming into the Fifth Frontier War, which is a very important moment in the history of Traveler. And it looks to be kind of a new take on an old favorite. SF Gaming Convention calendar. Hurry, jump in your time machine. Go back to March of 1984, and you can still make some of these. Gen Con South. Huh. Wow. In a Monte Carlo casino or a shark-infested bay in Hong Kong alley or a millionaire's mansion, when no one else can do the job, send 007. Religious. He's great adventures for 007 role-playing game. And this was available at Buyer's Hobby in Woodstock, Illinois. Friends Hobby Shop in Waukegan, Illinois. Games Plus, Mount Prospect, Illinois. Mini Mall Hobbies in Granite City, Illinois. Never at any others. I was only at Games Plus. First one to Games Plus, I want this summer of 84. It was, I think, August, but it might have been July. I don't remember. But uh, it was, it's been almost 40 years since I've been a patron there. Hobby Game Distributors, Inc. out of Chicago, Illinois. By the way, Games Plus, if you have an opportunity, they're outstanding. Go there. And if you don't, they have a great online presence. So, recommend it. That's where we first held the first jump point. Good evening, Mr. Bond. The 007 role-playing system reviewed. You get to look at all that stuff. I never bought the, the James Bond stuff. We got an ad here for Charmed Fantasy. These are the actual size amulets you get out of Troy, Michigan. All yours for $7.75 per amulet. Look at that. I would like the Dragon's Claw with the, the sphere. Play the epic series, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, Dragonlance. I remember being excited about Dragonlance. Uh, overall, I like Dragonlance. I was a little disappointed. There's a, an emphasis on lower magic in Dragonlance, which I get, but that wasn't how I played. We did try it. We played it for a little bit, but uh, I ended up not staying in Kryn very long. Raffam Company, Flint and Feather, some Native American designs. It's interesting. Never had those. Gamer's Guide, just a kind of a, a personal ad page, if you will, that Dragon ran, indexed to advertisers. Dragon Magazine Mail Order Auction. You have an opportunity to uh, bid on some old issues of Dragon Magazine. That's interesting. I don't remember this. Huh. Clip and mail this completed official bid form. Put your bid down. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, sponsored by the Mail Order Hobby Shop. Wow. Okay. Fantasy Games Unlimited. Space Opera, Villains and Vigilantes, Aftermath. Chivalry and Sorcery and Bushido. I played Space Opera and Villains and Vigilantes. Villains and Vigilantes was my very first superhero game. Out of Roslyn, New York. And then we come to Dragon Mirth. I always loved Dragon Mirth. Many times I just skip straight to it. Wormy. Gotta like Wormy. What's new? My personal favorite out of these. I always enjoyed What's New. And then Snarf Quest. Snarf Quest finishing up. We always got about two or three pages out of that. Silver Dawn. Uh, these are uh, Silver Dawn, a brilliant excursion into fantasy fueled by the healthy fire of moderator's imagination. A play by mail. There you go. And then the back page ad Come to Middle Earth. Middle Earth role playing games. MERPS. M -E -R, Middle Earth role playing system. MERPS. 
There you go from Iron Crown Enterprises. Had a few Murps things over the years. Again, don't really remember what I did with them, but there you have it. That's a nice look at Dragon Magazine number 83 from March of 1984, 40 years ago this month. Um, I love going through these dragons. These are so much fun. Uh, the Baba Yaga, uh, comp, the, the actual adventure of Baba Yaga, I ran probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago, right after I got the Baba Yaga figure. Uh, that lasted for several games. It was a lot of fun. I actually took a high-level group through that and just beefed things up a little bit. But that's all I have for today on page 121. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I'll see you next time.